Jerry Watterson. This is Chef Dennis Chan. And our guest today is Chef Ashley Amon uh, of Fusion Food Truck. So we are excited to have Chef Ashley and to dive into some Indian cuisine today. All right, so what are we making today? All right, so we're making um, chicken madras curry. I don't know if you guys have heard of chicken madras curry, but um, it's very, very popular in all over the UK. Every Indian restaurant has chicken madras curry. When I moved here to the States, I'm like, wow, especially in Jacksonville, I have not yet seen chicken madras curry. So I have picked the madras, especially um, it's from it's from madras, uh, which is now called Chennai. And it's basically a very um, sweet, sour, tangy curry with a lot of different, different spices. In there. So I'm going to go ahead and start chopping my onion. Uh, Dennis, if you can have yeah, some help, I'll, I'll help. I've got some help. cherry tomatoes and maybe a bell pepper right here. Um, then we'll get started on cooking the chicken. So I tell you, if the spices that I smell are yeah. an indication of what this dish is going to be like, it smells so good in here. Right? And they're all different smells that we normally don't have in our kitchen. So I'm just uh, oh my glad gosh. to... So many spices. And uh, I got to tell you, my mother-in-law, she makes her own spice blend that I will be using today. It consists of 45 different spices. Oh my goodness. I've tried to make it. That's a crazy 45 yes, different spices. Four, and I've seen her make these spices and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. You know, she gets like whole spices she'll roast them and then she'll grind them and then pound them and then get some powder spices blend all this together and i'm not kidding 40 i counted 45 different spices wow that's yeah, a wild I, I cannot do that the colonel <laughs> has nothing on your mother right <laughs> i know but she knows she teaches me a lot too so god bless her like i have to make a note of all her recipes and so I'm going to show you, I'm going to get to my spice box in a minute and just show you all these different spices. Mustard seeds, I know you're familiar with this one, turmeric powder, and you have to have that one in your curry. Here's a blend of roasted cumin and coriander seeds. This one here is garam masala. It has like 10 different spices all blended up together. Roasted cumin seeds right here. This one's my favorite, my mother-in-law's secret blend of 45 different spices all roasted and grinded up together. Let me go grab my other box and show you what else I have. We have here anise, has a licorice flavor to it. And then we have over here clove powder, a little bit goes a long way, guys. Cinnamon powder, salt, cardamom powder, great for your sweet and savory dishes, caraway seeds. This one here is kasturi methi. Grind it up, sprinkle a little bit on your curry. It's going to really enhance the flavor of your curry. Let's grab our spices and go cook. Ashley's getting our wok heated up over here. Chef Dennis slicing and dicing onions, doing a little everything. Chef Dennis, I got a question for you. Yeah. So we see all these spices for the, this Indian, for you know that Chef actually uses for Indian dishes. Mm -hmm. Do you see that many spices in many other cultures? Like, would, would you have that quantity of spices? I would say that uh, Indian culture. Have you are seen really Dennis's the, kitchen? He uh, has tons <laughs> of spices back there. Dennis is a little unusual <laughs> though. <laughs> well, you know, we we love cooking food of all different cultures, so. We have to have many ingredients just on hand for that reason. And that was my joke, right? You're a little unusual in that you cook for, you like to cook so many different things. Yes. And you actually do in your restaurant or by request from guests, uh, that, you know, that you don't just get Chinese cuisine or you don't just get Chinese Southern fusion, which is a lot of what you do. You get a little of all the different things plus awesome Chinese cuisine or Chinese Southern fusion. Let's slide over here with Chef Ashley. She's getting things so that All right, so yeah, so I'm gonna drop that cup of teaspoon of oil right here. Wash it kind of hot right now. So we're ready for that. And then I'm gonna throw in our spices. I'm gonna start off with uh, some cumin seeds. This is gonna start popping, so cumin, a little bit of mustard seeds. As soon as you can see that popping right now, that means it's ready for the onions. That's quick. Pop the onions in there. You can really smell that onion. Right? You smell that? 
Absolutely. You probably smelled all the mustard seeds. I love those mustard seeds. If you took a pinch of that and you threw it in the dirt and you spread the dirt around, a week later you'd have sprouts oh, everywhere. Yes, everywhere. I did yeah. that. I, I grew mustard oh, greens. Oh. I saved the seeds one year. Yeah. I took a pinch like this, uh -huh. threw it on the ground. Oh, wow. I kid you not. Just oh, threw it gosh. in the garden where there was nothing there in the dirt yeah. and spread the dirt around. And I had like literally every seed sprout, like no 50 way. sprouts. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to come over to my house and then show me how to grow plants. You can do mustard greens in your sleep. Anybody really? can do it. If you ever want to do it, just a pinch of mustard green seeds, spread the oh. dirt around, water every day for a week. They'll pop out of the ground and then just that. water them a couple times a week and you're good. Wow. I'm going to try that. Just make sure you're in the right season, right? Like yes. it's a little too hot right now. Right. Maybe in the springtime. Although I had some that made yeah. it that didn't sprout when they should have. Yeah. Sprouted in the summer and I have mustard greens oh, right wow. now even though I shouldn't. They're probably way too spicy to actually want to eat. <laughs> we should have used some of that. So I'm going to let a little bit. So, sure. so you grew up in London, right? Yes. So, uh -huh. so, so cooking Indian cuisine in London. Yeah. Did you ever work in London restaurants cooking? No, I was, I was still too young and I was still going to college and school. So I, I was born in East Africa okay. and then I moved to London when I was about a year old. So I grew up there and um, um, in London, we, you know, we, I mean, we basically ate at home most of the time. My mom's cooking. But then we would go out, like birthday parties, family dinners. We go to all these different Indian restaurants. And that's how we grew up and got familiar with Indian cuisine, which which you know, which wasn't what stuff my mom used to cook. It was like more of the North Indian food. My mom never cooked um, meat at home. We were all vegetarian at home. But when we went out, we were allowed to eat chicken and fish and stuff like that. So that yeah, was quite a treat. But, you know, London... UK's favorite is Indian food. Number one. Oh, yes. Yeah. In so many great so, Indian restaurants. Yeah. Most of the Indian folks I know would say that the Indian food in England may even be better than the Indian food you might find in India. I'm sure that's a controversial opinion, but. No, I, I, I would definitely say that because I've been to India and I've been all over India, and, and hands down, Indian food in England is so much better than the food in India. I gotta say that. That's that's my opinion. Wow. You know, sure. The food yeah. I've had. Sure. That's, that's, that's the reason for a trip. I hear it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Any excuse for a trip, always. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I want um, a lot of people at, at home don't know what the spice rack is. The Indian spice rack. Yes. And years ago, I said that is amazing and i had to go to the indian store to buy one for myself yeah and just to have as a toy yeah not to uh, use but you you actually use it yeah can you tell us a little bit about how how everyone uses those in an okay. indian household so, yeah i mean pretty much every indian household has we call it a masala daba so basically this one here has all the ground spices now, some people will have multiple. They'll have like three, four different ones where, you know, like I have another one at home where I have all my whole spices. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, whole cinnamon, whole cloves, whole nutmeg, all that kind of stuff is in one. So you can just kind of make it to how you want it. Like, I usually use this more often than any of the others. So it just depends, you know, what you're cooking and how you're cooking. So, so the whole spices are more for like a stew or yeah. A soup? Yeah, basically more yeah. stew. And you can, I, I don't like to put whole spices too much in here because, you know, like I find like when you're eating, a lot of people don't want to like bite into like a big right. piece of cinnamon or clove. It's, it's very yeah, strong. Just spit it out so, to the yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just keep them all around like that. Uh, We're going to add a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of cardamom, 
just a tiny little bit of clove powder. And then we're going to add a little bit of salt. And you can just add your salt however you like. I've so never I'm seen this taste. many spices go into a dish before. Right? Maybe I'm not, I haven't been around a lot of Indian cooking, but like uh, literally I've never seen this lot. many spices go yeah. into one dish. You know, as soon as those dried spices hit the pan, yeah. you smell it because For it's sure. heated and yeah. all those oils and the spices are starting yes. to be released. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people when they cook curries, they'll put the sauce and everything in there and then they'll put the spices into the sauce, but you never want to do that because you want to release all the flavors. Yeah. So you want to put the spices first with the oil and the onions. Um, this tastes better. It takes out a little bit of the bitterness. Okay, now we're going to add the chicken to this. So we have here this diced is, yes. breasts. It's a chicken tender Tenders, okay. Yes. But if you don't want to put chicken in, you can pretty much put anything you like in here. You can put fish, you can put whole chicken with the bone, you can put vegetables, tofu, paneer, which is the Indian cheese, you can put whatever you like. Okay, so we're going to mix all this up. And we're just going to let this cook. We're going to let it cook for about five minutes and we're going to come and check on it. And turn down the heat a little bit. Okay. All right, so we got the chicken cooking right here. I'm going to go and add, this is just uh, basically tomato sauce, which comes in the can. I'm going to add about three spoons of this into it. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this in a couple of minutes. So that all this makes in. Water for just the consistency that you want? Yeah, just, just a little bit. You don't want it too um, liquidy. This is more kind of like a fake curry. So just a little bit, just to top it. That makes sense. So, yeah. you, so you were you cooked in London for a while, or you grew up in London, yeah. and then you moved to the U.S. and then you ended up in California, right? Yes. So after in, after my college days, I moved to um, U.S. and then from here. I was in uh, San Diego, California. We lived there for about 20 years. And then I got married and moved over here to Jacksonville. So um, back in San Diego, myself and my brother, we went on to a restaurant empire. We had like, a, actually we first started with just a little frozen yogurt store. And in that we started cooking Indian food, you know, like the samosas. We did like a little combo plate with like little chickpea curry a bit of rice and a samosa. And it took off. And people were like, oh my gosh, what is this? We want more of it. So then from that, we opened up our first Indian restaurant. And then we had our second Indian restaurant. We had a Chinese restaurant. We had a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> we had a total of five restaurants. It had to be fun to get to cook all different things each day. Yes. You know, Although I didn't cook the Chinese right? food. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we had a, a professional chef who cooked Chinese, Cantonese food. So. I didn't do any of that, but I did cook. I got a chance to cook some of the Mexican food, and I learned a lot from that. But I cooked mostly on the in Indian Indian restaurants, so um, that was what I specialized. And you won an award uh, yeah. while you were there, right? Best, the best Indian chef, best Indian chef in San Diego. Um, I actually was so blessed. I won a lot of different awards, and uh, got really like you know just for the restaurant being number one for like multiple times, which but. Was, was a huge blessing. So. Amazing. And then you came here and opened a food truck and yes. you were voted best chef in Jacksonville yes, as well. Yes, yes, And then uh, the food truck actually came up because, you know, when I moved here, I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like, uh, I've done restaurants all my life, pretty much. And then it was just like, you know, how it, how it is. It's like, once you've been in that restaurant field and cooking, that's all you want to do. But I couldn't because I didn't know where to start. And then I, so I, I worked for Florida Blue. I worked for Merrill Lynch. It was too cold for it for me. I, I came home crying and I said to my husband, I don't like this. You're stuck in a cubicle all day on the phone. That's not me. Oh, not, yeah. You know? When you saw I work for Maryland, I thought you meant like in there like cooking. Oh, yeah. Oh, that you know, would like be They all different. have like a little restaurant, yes. you know? No, no, no. no. no, you were no, like, no. I was on that. Do, oh, do the office grind. Yes. Oh, so I hated it. And then, um, you know, our friends talked us in and gave us some advice and stuff about doing a food truck. And then 
Oswald surprised me one day. He comes home. He's like, oh, look, I just bought a fruit truck. I'm like, no way. <laughs> that's the kind of, kind of thing my wife murders me for, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I'm like, that's the best gift I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But his joke is, that, his joke is, uh, what is this? Like, uh, I, he can he can happily say to me, "You belong in the in the kitchen." I'm like, "Don't ever say that to me." <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's how how it started the food truck, and then from that, it's been um, 11 years now. We've had wow. the food truck. So, long yeah. time. Yeah. Heck of a long time. Yes. I am in love with the banana curry. The banana curry. The, oh. I actually not in love. I've never seen banana curry before. Yes. I don't know that many people have ever seen banana yeah. curry before. So that actually, um, you know, my mom growing up, she used to make banana curry, but she used to get the whole banana. She cut it into three pieces, like with, with the skin on it. And then she would slit it. And then she would get a blend of spices, make a paste, and she would, you know, insert it into the slits. And then she would like stir fry it with onions, garlic, ginger. And then once the banana was like softened, we just eat it with like bread or rotis and Ooh. rice. So that's how, that's what inspired me. And we were, I think it was at a food truck rally or something, and we were entering a competition. Judge is like, are you guys ready with your dish? And I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I just grabbed a banana and I, I made some like Thai Indian curry sauce. And that's, I threw my bananas in it. And that's how so it came So one of your most yes. popular dishes, right? Yeah, and it, and it won awards, so. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's why it goes to my mom, so. All right. But, yeah. Speaking of eating something delicious. Yes. I think this is almost ready. We got to be close. I think we're ready to add some, uh, some of this frenuary. Frenuary. All right, I'll slide out of the way. You guys can. This is frenuary. Oh, here it right comes. Here. It's a little cilantro. So you basically just get some in your hand. It's roasted. And then you just want to rub it like this. So it powders up. And it releases all the flavors. We just mix that in there. And then we're going to add our peppers in here. I'm going to add some whole onions. Give it that crunch. And then we're going to add some leaves. And we're going to have, some people use lemon. I like to use orange because it gives a little sweetness along with the tank. So a little half the orange. I fusioned it up a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Give that back to you. So can I ask you a little bit about the curry leaves? I know curry leaves grow really well in our part of the country. Yes. Um, and uh, can you describe the flavor that curry leaves adds? Because yes. it's not like curry powder. No, no. A lot of people, they mistake that. They're like, oh, this doesn't like, taste like curry powder. But once you put it into your curry, basically, to me, it tastes, it's almost like a... Um, very citrusy, has a very citrusy, earthy flavor to it, and it just adds depth of flavor to any of your curries. You can even put it in your rice dish. You know, really? It's making rice with frozen curry leaves, gives it a really good flavor. So this is tagrin right here, which I'm just kind of putting in there, squeezing in a little bit. This is fresh, uh, not whole fresh, but it's tagrin without the seeds. So is tamarind a fruit? I'm not really all that familiar with tamarind. Yes, yes. Tamarind is a fruit. I don't know if you see how it grows on trees, but it's, it has a shell, and then the, the seeds are inside of it. You can pick it out, and it, then it grows like this, like a pulp. A lot okay. of people will boil this down in water and sugar and make tamarind chutney out of it. And in Mexico, they make uh, a tamarindo, which is a drink. Yes. With tamarind and sugar and water, and it's um, yes. it's better to me. It's better than fruit punch. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Have you ever tried it with some sprite? Oh, is oh, that the key? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it's almost like a spritzer. So good. I've never had the tamarind haritos, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the soda, right? So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds like about what Ashley was shooting for: some sprite, yeah. some tamarind. Yes. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. I'm going to pick this down for another minute, and then we'll be ready. I wish you guys could smell the smells going on here, oh, because, yeah. like, this, this is smelling smell heaven. Yeah. So no wonder this dish is so popular in all of England. Right? There's so many different spices. Yes. like so much depth of flavor in there. 
I mean, you got sweet, citrus, uh, spice in there. It's so many. The number of flavors going this blows my mind. It yes. really does. Like, I've watched chefs make a million different dishes. And I think this is by far the most spices I've ever, or flavors I've ever seen thrown into one right. dish. And then, last of all, I'm going to add some cilantro. So we're going to chop up some cilantro. You know, one of the things I appreciate about cilantro is that when you get truly fresh cilantro, it's like a totally different herb than when you get cilantro that's even been like a week in a grocery store. Yeah. Like when I pull cilantro out of my garden and eat yes. cilantro, there is a pop to it that you don't have a week later. You know, just fresh is everything. And, you know, uh, the new, it seems like lately the cilantro that you can get fresh or in the stores, it doesn't have that. People say that they don't like cilantro. They haven't tasted it lately. Because I don't know if it, the, it's mild out or what, but it's... You uh, think they've gotten a little mild and not, yes. it's not as intense for people? Yes. It's it's really hit or miss. Like, I've grown, when it, when it's right, it's unbelievable out of the garden. When it's wrong, it tastes like a cleaning product. So, like, I've heard that. My last two batches have been cleaning products. Like, oh, so miserable. All right, so last of all, I'm going to add some cherry tomatoes. Just a nice, sweet little flavor to it. And some cilantro. We're going to save some cilantro for garnish. Add that. We're going to let that cook for another minute. And we'll be good to go. Now, while that's cooking for another minute, I'm going to throw some uh, garlic naan on here. All right, so while this is cooking, I'm going to throw a piece of garlic naan on here. Basically, you can eat this curry with anything you want. You can cook it with, uh, eat it with rice. Roti bread, naan. You can eat it with just white sliced bread. It tastes really good with that, oh. too. So, But, you know, naan, it's just uh, so popular now. You can find it anywhere. Like, you can go to Publix, Costco, in your Indian store, anywhere you can find naan. It's kind of awesome that you can find it everywhere. Yes. And it's so delicious. I mean, offer some, like... Um, what do you call it? Some fried eggs on there. Make avocado toast. Well, that sounds with good. Naan. Yeah, yeah, it tastes yeah. so good. Earlier, we were talking about um, tandoori ovens, yes. and um, a Ashley like is like a god status because she has a tandoori oven in her backyard. Oh, yes. In your backyard? Yes, that was wow. all because of my husband. He's like, you know what? I just can't get good tandoori. You know what? I'm gonna go buy a tandoori oven and put it in our outdoor kitchen. This I'm like, awesome. oh great, right. that's more work for me now. <laughs> That's, no, we, we love that's it. what it works for me now. <laughs> it sounds like something my wife would say to it's, me when I buy a fun yeah. gift. It's a, <laughs> it is a true skill to be able to work at Tandoori Oven. Yes. The first time that I ever saw one, I was on a trip in Hong Kong, and this Indian restaurant that I went to um, had three Tandoori ovens, and you were you watched the the chefs just kind of work the yeah. the dough that's and scary. work the rods in the oven. And uh, throw the the naan onto the side. The speed yes. when you go to an overseas market, yes. and th these artisans who've been doing this for absolutely forever, yep. are, you get to watch them do their craft. Yes. It's mind blowing. Oh yeah, it, absolutely mind blowing. Yes. The speed they can make things, whether it's a little lady making the oh, desserts. Yeah, have you seen those YouTube or, videos where they make those breads and like I don't know, like Middle East somewhere, and they're just flapping it like this, mm -hmm. and super thin. I can't. You I want, want to eat it. When yeah. You watch the oh, videos. Yes. yes. I want to go to Turkey just to do that. Yeah. Just to yeah, eat I think that. Yeah, it was in Turkey that I saw. I saying, there's a million guys doing breads yeah. and things like that. So, this is another kind of bread. It's more of like cracker. It's called papadum. Okay. Um, basically, it's made of rice flour. It's seasoned with a little bit of cumin. But you can get a lot of different flavors. This one's cumin. You get black pepper, garlic. You get ones with chilies in it. So basically, you could cook this in a microwave if you want. Put it on for like a minute. Or cook. Um, I like cooking it on like a flame. So I'll cook it on my gas top or even just in a frying pan. And you'll see how it cooks instantly. Like oh, wow. So you want to kind of keep turning it so it doesn't really burn. You can see it starts browning right here. Yep. And you can eat this for, you can eat it as an appetizer. Basically with like mango chutney or chutney, you can eat it with salsa, you can eat it with hummus, um, but a lot of Indian people, we eat this with our meal, um, just along with the curries, 
it's just a nice little practice. So are we just shooting for like a little bit of bubbling across yeah, the whole thing? Yeah, that's it. You don't want any raw bits to be left. And that's it. And then it, it's, right now it's really soft. So you can fold it, you can make it like this, you can do anything you want. You can keep it flat. That's I just beautiful. like making little shapes. Yeah. <laughs> You can make taco shell out of it. Yeah, it's a taco bowl. shell, yep. Yeah. And look right. So our chicken de dross is ready. It smells delicious. Okay, now I'm going to plate it over here. Ooh, look at that. Does this take you back to your childhood in London? Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, this is this was actually one of my favorite dishes back in London. I used to always order this. Uh, every time we go to an Indian restaurant, this is my favorite. This with some buttered naan, passion fruit juice. So, if you want to garnish that, I'll bring the bread. You can never have too much cilantro in my opinion. Oh, I'll just, you like I cilantro? Okay. There you go. Let's see. Okay, so we have some naan right here. And then I'll chop it down. And then we have our rice that I had cooked earlier. So this is basically basmati rice. Um, it's flavored with some cumin and some green peas. Now, if you ever ordered this in an Indian restaurant, it's called jira rice. Jira. Yeah, jira rice, which jira means cumin. So it's uh, oh. used with cumin seeds. So yeah, that's your meal right here. You want a little cake? Who, who wouldn't want to taste? <laughs> We've been smelling this for the last half hour. Oh, we definitely are going to want to taste. Place, right? All right. Absolutely. Let's do it. Nice here. Put a little chicken. So you've had a food truck for 11 years now. Do you ever want to go back to the restaurant to having your own restaurant? Oh my God, are you kidding me? No <laughs> Hey, I will never go back to a restaurant. Everybody wants to go the other way. Everybody wants to start with a food truck and go to a restaurant. You and the opposite. Yes. Why never go back to a restaurant? Well, first of all, I think I'm too old for a restaurant now. Now, <laughs> now like, if I was in my 30s. It may be too smart. <laughs> uh, you know, I take that back. If I was in my 30s, I think I would do it in a heartbeat because I love the restaurant, the, the environment, you know, the atmosphere, the, sure. everything about having a restaurant. It's fun. You know, but you really have to have a lot of energy, I think. A lot, I mean, you're married to the restaurant. You know, you have you to do be it all there the time, right? Seven, yes. Yeah. With the food truck now, I'm flexible. You know, I can take vacations, I can take days off, I don't have to be there all the time. So that's the best part. That makes sense, right? You get to, you get to pick your own schedule? Yes, yes. My uh, own schedule. And we can go to like different spots, you know, like we can go to like, out of town if we wanted to we can go to like different events festivals catering we can go to someone's house park in the backyard you know you, you so it gives you this amazing flexibility right yes. yeah you yes. go to where the business is yes. instead of the business coming exactly. to you and one of those things we got to talk about beforehand is like unlike most businesses restaurants are kind of a tough one to build and then exit later Yes. You know, you don't really build restaurants for exit. You build it for a business today. Yes. You know, yeah. All of those of us who are passionate about food service, yeah. we do it because we love what we do. Right. And, yeah, it's a labor um, of love, yeah. you know. Like, like uh, even for myself, it's just like, I. it's not like a job for me, you know. Like, I look forward to getting up in the morning and going to work and cooking and, you know, I, I don't see it as a job. It's like, I love to feed people. I love to see their their reactions and the comments I get. It's so rewarding. You, know? you get to make magic for people every yes. day. There's something so sweet about that. Yes. It's one of my favorite things about being around chefs is there are people who get up and chase their passion every day. Right, right. And even if it's a giant headache sometimes yes. or, or you've got that awful customer who you can't just please. Right. You know, you go through all those things so you can create the magic for people that do appreciate yes, it. Yes, exactly. All right. So I'm going to All right. I gotta make some for our camera lady too. <laughs> so hard. Thank you so much, Abby. Doing a wonderful job. All right. Well, you're playing the Abby. I'm gonna dive in for a bite. And All we'll... right. That's mind blowing. 
Uh, there are so many flavors going on in there. There you go, Abby. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who are watching, if you've never had a chance to visit Ashley's food truck, her food is always beautifully plated. When you get it, you smell it before it comes to you. It's Aww. always so delicious and so Which is why you're the most successful food truck operator that I know. Oh, so, thank you. Um, well, hey, you know what? If it wasn't for Jacksonville, all the love and support, I don't think we'd be that successful. Because, you know, to our fans and to everybody out there, you know, thank you so much. Thank you. Because, you know, it, it's just so rewarding to have everybody. Like, well, our regulars. Like, I've known some people, like, we've been out for 11 years. I've known them for 11 years. Like, they've gotten married. Come back here. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. so cool. Now, yeah. it's over company truck, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Thanks to them. Well, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank it's you. been thanks a pure so pleasure. Much. Yes. And, uh, this is even better. I hope it's not too spicy because I did tell them that. Not, not really spicy good. at all for me. I'm sure it would normally be much spicier. Uh, I appreciate yeah. you looking out for me. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm a worse when it comes to spice. I'm going to take a trip to London because this is like, yeah. there's going to never be any better. Yeah. This is yeah. amazing. You follow us in the food truck. So. So if people, if people want to find you, yes. what is your website yes. and how do they find your uh, Our website, so fusionbeats.com. You can go to our Facebook page, you can go to Instagram, you can call us, text us, whatever you like. Your mouth is going to water if you visit those websites. Uh, pages. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Okay, well, thanks for being here and we'll see you next time, guys.